Hey, how are you doing guys? It's Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Today we're looking at the thing that you guys are always asking about, correlation and regression analysis. This is, I feel, a quite important video, so I'm going to take my time, I've got a glass of water here. By the end of the video, I hope you have a better understanding of the difference between correlation and regression. So let's start. Use of bivariate correlation and regression. So just to recap, this correlation is a number between minus 1 and plus 1 inclusive that measures the strength of relationship between two continuous or ordinal variables. The professor might just say, might not use the word bivariate, they might just say correlation, but they will mean bivariate correlation. And that's important because we'll see by the end of the video there are two other types of correlation. Okay, so some people don't know whether they should be doing a correlation or regression. So let's just say now. So correlation, you just need correlation if you just want one ballpark number that gives you a s measures the strength of the linear relationship between the variables. Now when do you use regression? Well, regression is used for two purposes. One is if you want to investigate a causal type relationship. So there's like cause and effect kind of relationships. Now for this, if you have two variables, you need to be able to distinguish between a dependent variable and an independent variable. So the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. These names, the, these variables also have different names. Y and the X. The independent variable can go as regressor, explanatory variable. The other use for regression is for prediction. So this is because we know that we have a dependent variable and independent variables. We want to be able to kind of predict the values of the dependent variable given kind of a situation where we know some values of the independent variables. Now my feeling is that uh, unless you are a computer scientist that when you study regression they may not make it clear to you but we are building regression models to kind of study causal type relationships. And that's important because the approach you Go, uh, you set out to build a model for causal relationships or for prediction I think is uh, slightly different. So for causal relationships this is you'll know you are building such a model because you'll be trying to interpret the uh, what interpretation of the coefficient or you know your professor might say build a model and interpret the coefficient of, of the betas or something like that. Prediction you're building a model for prediction. If you want to say, right, given the situation where your x variables take this, this, and this, what is the value for your uh, dependent variable? So prediction is more kind of used by businesses. It seems like at universities they'll teach you, or colleges they'll teach you the approach for causal relationships, but out in the real world you'll be building models for prediction. Okay, this brings us to that. That's the, dif the distinction between the two. Next, meaningless bivariate correlation. So many um, correlations uh, don't actually have a mean anything, they don't have a value. And why this is the case is because people go about using this bivariate correlation to determine causal relationships. But as we just said, um, we use regression to do that. Uh, and uh, this um, stems from the fact that the relationship between the two variables could be indirect or partially indirect as we're going to see some examples later on. Right, we'll see it now. Next, examples of meaningless correlation. Right, this is the fun bit because if you kind of understand the use of bivariate correlation you often see like uh, in the front page of tabloids and stuff quoted by nutritionists that some things seem a bit strange about their about their um, what they claim. So in medicine there's a distinction between exposure and outcome. They're interested in looking at the relationship between these two. For example cancer and the income. Cancer rate and income. Now we could guess that there is a, po there is a positive bivariate correlation between income and cancer. But does that mean that the richer you are that uh, increases the chance of you getting cancer? No, that sounds a bit weird and it's it's an example of a meaningless correlation. It's a correlation, yes, but doesn't mean anything. Now that, in this case, it stems 
from the fact that the relationship between income and cancer is not direct. I really should have made it uh, quite clear to you that this bivariate correlation just uh, measures the strength of the linear relationship between the, these two continuous or no variables, direct or indirect. Okay, so in this case, uh, income and cancer, there is a positive correlation, but it's meaningless because the relationship is not direct. Um, in this case, it's because, for example, there are some other variables, such as age, that is correlated to both income and cancer. So if we take account of age, we will find that there is no bivariate correlation, or no correlation sorry, between income and cancer. Another example, say from nutritionists, front page of tabloids, is a claim made that the more olive oil you eat, you consume, the less your skin wrinkles, i.e. there's a negative correlation between consumption of oil, oil and skin wrinkling. Alright, so does that mean that I should just go out and consume gallons of olive oil to get a nice baby skin? No, because this is also a meaningless correlation. In this case, it's because there are some other variables that are related to both olive oil and skin wrinkling. For example, social class, sun exposure, stress levels, and so on. So in both these examples that I've just given you, the apparent correlation between the two variables is not actually there because it's the fact that uh, they only seem to be there is because of some one or more other variables that they're both linked to. All right, and we'll see in another video, not this one. That's this is quite common, and it's what we call a confounding variable. So finding meaningful correlations is quite hard because suppose you find like there's a correlation between two variables, then you have to think very hard about whether you could have possibly some other variables that are linked to both of them. Now you might have or might not have access to the data on this other one or more variables that you think could be linked to the two things you're looking at, but at least you should mention it in your critique, or if you actually have the data, do it, as in control for it, as we'll see at the, in the final bullet point. Okay, finally we get to an, a demonstration using SPSS. So here we're looking at an example from a European folklore that storks deliver babies. Okay, I won't give you the story, you can Google it, but uh, yeah, the idea is that storks flying overhead just drop babies on doorsteps. Uh, now that sounds a bit far-fetched, but we'll see. So here I've got data from across European countries on stock population uh, for over given years. Um, the birth number of births in whatever units it is. And I've also got a third thing called land area. Okay, so let's look at the correlation first between stalks and birth. We're interested to uh, look at the correlation between stalks and birth. So we'll go analyze, correlate, and we'll look at bivariate. Right, so we see here correlation between the number of pairs and number of births is 0.2, it's positive, and it's two stars, it's significant. The p-value for the correlation is 0 0.008, which is less than 0 0.05, indeed it's less than 0 0.01, so we conclude it's highly, it's a uh, very strong evidence to reject the null uh, hypothesis that uh, there is no correlation. But this emphasis here is that it's positive correlation. So does that support our story that stalks deliver babies. No, nope, because as I said that we said now that correlation doesn't cannot by itself be used for causal type explanations. So let's go back now to the third bullet point. Uh, so the last bullet point. Avoiding meaningless correlations. Alright. At the start we said this we we, uh, we first studied the bivariate correlation. When we have some other variables which we think can be influenced in the relationship between the two things we're looking at, we have to study, look at some other type of correlation if we are interested in doing only a correlation analysis. So we've got two options here, a partial or semi-partial correlation. In SPSS talk, semi-partial is called the part correlation. Okay, um, so just briefly, partial correlation is where you strip out the effect of this other variable, let's call it the third variable on each of the two variables we're looking at. Whereas in the semi-partial, um, 
we are we strip out the effect of this third variable on one of the variables only uh, and that variable and this is where it's linked to regression semi-partial is linked to regression so this third variable strips out the effect of the independent variable only in other words here then you will be looking at the correlate uh, relationship between the dependent variable on the explanatory variable stripping out the effect of this third variable that's what semi-partial does so you can do that with semi-partial or you can do it with regression because they are linked let's do that with our stock example we'll run a we'll run a part correlation so see there is a correlation there so we'll go to analyze correlation and partial Okay, so notice two boxes variables, but that's the two things that we're looking at relationship between and controlling for. So here we want number of births and number of pairs in the variables. And let's do control for land area. So our uh, the idea here is that what we're thinking here is that okay, land area is correlated to both number of births of babies and the number of pairs of stalks because the land larger the land area, the more population in both, right? So let's do that, let's control that out. And remember what this does, it strips out its effect on each of those. And then the correlation that we'll plot is the correlation of these two guys taking count of land area. The correlation now becomes 0.27, so it's dropped a lot. And notice it's not significant anymore, i.e. we do not reject the null hypothesis that there's actually zero correlation controlling for this uh, land area. So if we were doing a report and wanted to do a correla correlation analysis, this would be more appropriate than the bivariate. So if we want to fall, we do not want to fall into the into this thing of reporting meaningless correlations. We want to do a good dissertation. We should be thinking about controlling, see, think about whether there are other kind of factors that influence, but uh, that are related to both the things we're looking at. You could also report the par uh, semi-partial correlation. But to do that, we have to do it through regression in SPSS, and that's uh, remember that's due to the fact that semi-correlation regression are linked. Now, if we do the regression analysis, we can also get the partial correlation. So let's do that. Analyze regression linear. All right, dependent variable. So here we think about a causal effect type relationship here. So it'll be the number of births, which we think is is uh, dependent on the independent variables, number of pairs of stalks, and land area click on statistics and you can see here that we can call for part and partial correlations now just interested in looking at this coefficients box so this is the usual bit I've done a whole video on how to interpret this side but look at the end bit now I've called for the correlation we've got the zero order which is SPSS to speak for bivariate correlation the thing that you, we first study and get rid of that click to activate Right, so if we looked at the correlation between pairs of stalks and uh, number of babies, we saw at the start we had 0.62 and here it is. And we also saw when we ran the partial, sorry, the, yeah, the partial correlation was 0.273, there it is. I mean, sorry, the partial, part, uh, yeah, partial. If we wanted to report the part instead, it drops even more. Um, the thing with this regression though is when we call for the correlations, it doesn't give us any p-values here. So that's how it's slightly different to when we ran it using the uh, the other option. So regression now tells us a bit more about the relationship causal. Uh, well, I've got to be careful. Uh, it could tell us, it could support a causal type relationship uh, explanation, um, where we look at the unstandardized coefficient on the number of pairs here, and this is 0 0.006. It's very tiny. It's not even significant. In other words, um, the, this uh, regression telling us that controlling for land area, um, there's no predictive power or no relationship here between the number of pairs of stalks and the number of births, which is as we would expect. Now, I mentioned that with regression, we could also talk about prediction. So I just want to show you how we do that. I mean, it's meaningless here, so don't go doing it. But let's see. Let's just uh, do an example for you so you know how to use this regression. So let's look at the coefficients. Let's write down what they call the fitted uh, fitted equation, fitted line in this case. 
to our dependent variable, which is uh, number of babies. So let's say number of babies. Number of babies predicted value equals, hmm, I should say estimated to be quite sure, estimated number of babies or predicted number of babies. Predicted is better. Okay, the constant, which is the intercept, minus 7.412 plus 0 0.0006 number of pairs plus 0.002 land. So let's say we had a situation where we're interested in that number of pairs being, um, we don't care about the units here, let's just say it's uh, no pair, uh, one. Okay, one pairs. Say like the land area is one. Let's just, these are meaningless, but so what do you do? You take these two numbers and you plug them up here. So where you've got this 0.06 number of pairs, that actually means times. So we've got times one. Okay, that's taking a land area that was one as well. So this land is times whatever that number we set to. It's one. All right. Put that in your calculator. And verify that comes to minus seven point four oh four here it's meaningless. The number of predicted babies is negative. Okay, but because I put in meaningless numbers here. Take home message here is that if you want to study correlation, don't use it for um don't use it for causal relationships. If you find there is correlation between two variables, think about whether your correlation is meaningless and is meaningful before you report it to do that think about other possible variables that could be related to one or more of the other two variables that you're looking at correlation gives you less information than regression it's just telling you it just gives you an idea of the strength of relation between two variables with prediction you can use that to explore causal relationships here we're interpreting the slope parameters and we can use it for prediction in correlation we can get around um, meaningless correlations by thinking about using partial or semi-partial correlations or indeed just do a run a regression analysis where we can control for the other uh, variables okay so that's it um, I hope that's been useful I'm interested to see what your comments are and uh, and uh, see you in the next video stats uh, stats safe